I'm only using the free screen on the CP750. Or with the CP750 at the moment. Christ, drone a mighty. Jesus fucking Christ. Wow. Dynamics. Oh, look at the surrounds go there. But the reverberation and the kind of like an air being pushed right into the room. Down there, the surrounds. Oh, look at that go. Oh, lethal dynamic range. This song uh, presently Fader 4. Typically, um, usually a um, classic um, cinema Fader level for you know some films that are just bloody loud. But um, yeah, it's a little bit more than that. You know, so I could take the Fader up. Take it up a bit. I could have spent lower in the fader, it doesn't lower the uh, the level, except uh, it lowers the level here. So let's, I'll turn it up. Fader full. Look at the dynamic range going. video and I go over to computer because I'm still monitoring for auxiliary number two. <coughs> I'm monitoring the I'm only putting the uh, 
um, only using the left half, right half of the surround, and uh, I've only got the other uh, side ones on mute at the moment because I'm doing specific testing. Um, so it's the original surround signal that's playing on the back surround. If I go from here over to there, there's no sound going through. Because if I go to there, because I'm on PC computer mode, because there's no sound because it's not dialed in on the uh, even though with no sync picture, there's no picture there. So, um, in doing specific uh, frequency testing using um, our true RTAs. Doing sort of like uh, I can't remember which frequency response that one. I think that might be the uh, the left. That might be that might be the left. That might be the right. I can't remember which. But microphones all set up and then do the quick sweep and whoop, sort of thing. And then um, you know, gradually looking at it, and then just sort of thinking, okay, let's put a PEQ filter here and widen the Q out a little bit, lower it down, and get it kind of you know. But there's only there's only so much you could do with so many limited uh, nine bands. Um, if I trade off a few on the ABC and then Daisy Chain channel uh, channel one and two together with a wide lead, and then it outputs over to the THX. Then I can use up to maybe about 19 PEQ bands. Um, maybe that it may get it may just get it all within using so I think uh, that one is uh, 124 octave so it's up close so typically a uh, frequencies response on speakers will be um, kind of close-ish sort of thing but put the microphone there by two by but it's a little bit more than that because the microphones have got to be um, calibrated tested checked with a specific um so get a frequency response kind of flat first on a on a speaker and then go, and then once that's done and you've got one microphone that's you know looks you think looks maybe okay and then test the next microphone in that same position where it's testing on the speaker and do the frequency suite and see how the frequency grab the response looks like and if it's like hmm okay it's like it's going to look like it needs its own PEQ equalizer. Um, each microphone would need its own equalizer. So then, got to test everything through. And then once all that's done, um, those EQs for the microphones are then specific to that microphone. So when I set them all up, I know it's it's going to have that characteristic frequency response on that microphone. Uh, it's all been adjusted to be within a small dB tolerance, teeny. If if most uh, try and get it as well, to try and get it like a flat line response, like when you do a sweep uh, direct testing with um, a through processor, it's like a nice flat response going up and then across and then down um, because the sound card might have a, a roll off on the low end. Uh, but it'll go up and then cross and then it may just dip a little bit right just probably about maybe 15 up to 20,000 and then you know it's just shallow it's tiny you know and that could be compensated by just a little adjustment as well as bringing the frequency and tilting it a little bit down and sort of thing and then raising the gain level up on an amplifier just to sort of so that yeah you can just about hear that like Oh, the pressure of that um, high, high, high frequency, and while the other frequency is a little bit more calmer, just do a sound check test with sine wave tones, and it's like it's playing at minus whatever on the AVR. So you've got everything set up. So going into the AVR using the whether it be true RTA rem, you got it adjusted within the parameters. So using the fader on the AVR. And it's like I can still hear that sine wave tone at minus 40 dB, and that's 
usually, typically well below uh, where a film soundtrack would be playing at. But then, you know, where did the dynamics, very soft dynamics sometimes, coming in at a movie soundtrack that are very low? Um, very few films, and you just got to like, monitor and listen and get everything checked until you've got a, a simple standard uh, established. It's pretty good with the planes, and it's, it's sort of like getting the the frequency pressure somewhere between the front where the front speakers are to where the, the surround speakers are located at the back of the room or from the front coming down this way and then across that way or to that way to where the side surrounds are and get the frequency pressure equal to mimicking more or less similarly to the a single screen speaker and then the same with the overheads and then the same with the blow surround to get an equal so it's kind of like I suppose for um, somewhere like in the middle sort of up here sort of thing you know and then I suppose if you move the microphone up here uh, up a little bit and then down a little bit of say an imaginary line or whatever um, the frequency response should look a little bit different or it might only vary slightly and if that does then that's good um, but measuring a speaker up close is, is important so because you know where I know where I stand with it because then okay and then another mic set of microphones that are back here to monitor it, the frequency response back here and see what the trade-off is because obviously you know it sounds good it sounds even it sounds even going across um i have to put microphones up near where the surrounds are and this microphone has to be positioned um very carefully between where the mid-range is and the tweeter and where the bass driver is it's got to be kind of like looking at pink noise first ch checking it and then maybe moving the microphone back a little bit uh, or kick forward because it's it, it's a very time consuming procedure and then do a frequency sweep and then compare it with the frequency sweep that I'm getting from the screen speaker and then it's then a case of getting and tilting and adjusting the frequency it's until it's almost the same the speakers are match and be able to achieve and when you've got the speaker's sensitivity on a single speaker and then you add them all up the sensitivity level goes up theoretically frequency response also increases therefore you'd be able to get a little bit more low end out of the surrounds even though it says it's this for that speaker add them up and then do a specific frequency adjustment where okay you can see this frequency all up here certain range is a little bit too high lower it down take the level up a little bit the speakers are well within their param operating parameter operating technical tolerancing parameters so yeah Start that thing up and get in the air now. I'm not much good without a wingman. I need you. I got you. Let's fly. Get your ears beat up before you leave the dirt. I don't think I'm going to make it up over this 
Pretty loud at Theta 4, so you can imagine what it's like at Theta 7.